2009 and Precious. Now she's done the small screen, the big screen, and everything in between, including director. Gabourey Sidibe joins me. <laughs> your book so the book is this is just my face try not to stare I love the title I love everything about it I love that you wrote it I did you wrote it and you can tell you wrote it because you have a very distinct voice yeah that's what I was saying yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's an honest voice thank you yeah no. <laughs> city line real for us is about keeping it um, uh, very real getting rid of so the fakeness and and sort of putting out your vulnerability which is very difficult for people to do you've done it from cover to cover in this book um, you do it all the time on social media too so you're like a 140 character aficionado like you <laughs> slay on Twitter I don't even mean to but it's who you are <laughs> that's how you talk like you just you throw it out there um, and you can clap back you can you're you're quick with that stuff but you're also you've got this love-hate relationship so you love it but you're somewhat terrified of it oh because tw okay because Twitter look I never want to hurt anyone's feelings it, it's uh -huh. so easy to do so I'm constantly thinking about how I can say this without hurting someone's feelings but Twitter wants its feelings hurt <laughs> like Twitter like, <laughs> Twitter wants to have a problem with anything that you say and so it's like a land <laughs> It's, it's crazy to walk through and tiptoe around, ooh, I don't want to hurt this person's feelings or that person's feelings. I just want to talk about grilled cheese real quick. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. like, that's it. It's, it's, I do have a love-hate relationship with because it, it's so fun. Twitter is so much fun. Yeah. Especially, like, being on a TV show, like Empire American Horror Story, to tweet along with the fans while they're watching, it's so much. It's like we're watching, like, a family. Yes. But then I might say something racist. <laughs> just by accident, you talked to me too long. It's and like, something bad's gonna come out. I don't mean to, yeah. Well, the other the the other side of that coin, though, is that people can say mean things to you, and that's that to me is what what like rankles about social media. I put stuff out there, and I try and lead by example and be positive. But if someone's gonna say something about a family member or myself that I don't like, like that, it hurts. Yeah. And so you go in the book and you say you feel like you're too sensitive. I don't think you're too sensitive. I think you're human. Um, and people have said awful things to you in real life and on social media. So how do you drown out that noise? I, the second someone tweets something at me that makes me feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. that is mean, even if it's not about me, if it's about a friend or somebody else, I will block that person Im immediately yeah. because my own pettiness will start to like gurgle over and I want to clap back, but then they'll end up on the shade room and like it'll be a whole right. thing about like how, oh, Gabby said we said this to like this person and now that person gets to feel important for saying something nasty mm -hmm. and so I have to block them immediately to keep that from happening. Yeah. Um, I just like do whatever I like talk about in the book I say well you block you block mm -hmm. I block people like a crazy person <laughs> <You block. laughs> but I do it to keep my own sanity I yeah. just have to I want my world Twitter included to smell like strawberries and rainbows and I want I want positivity and I have to get it I don't care if I got to block you to do it yeah <laughs> okay that's fair that's fair I used to have a no block policy I've changed that in 2017 because mm. I don't want to see it well, I you really know, you don't. can mute people without blocking them. They don't even know. I don't even know. I didn't know. Can mute people now, yeah. Show me how to do that after. Okay. I got you. Yeah, I'm already like muted you, but I'll. <laughs> 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 uh, um, I want to talk about your body now, even oh. though you're bored of it. <laughs> You're sick of it, right? You're sick of this attention on your body. I mean, that's kind of what the what the book yeah. is about. Get over it, people. Yeah. Are people getting over it? Um, I think that people are getting that I want them to get over it, which mm. is great. You, the, the, I, you know, there's this weird thing where, like, when I was in elementary school and junior high school and in high school, people would make fun of my body because that's just what you do when you're, you know, a terrible child. Um, <laughs> but then I graduated from high school, and the other side of childhood is nor like there's some normalcy where like in you know, you're not allowed to talk about my body. You're not allowed to make fun of me because we're both in society. And why would you, I know I'm fat. You know I'm fat. Why do we have to keep talking about it? Mm. You know, um, but then I became an actor and now it's okay again but I had like a I had like a five solid years where nobody said anything mean to me about my body to my face to my face but all the time mm. um, and it's really all it is is about don't look at my body don't look at the things I hate about myself what about you what about you what about you and that's what it, that's just what we do in society you know everything that we do I say that you know writing my book I tell people who I am but you still see me through a filter of who you are
Right. You know what I mean? And matches what we do. That's why we talk about other people's bodies because of the things that we don't like about our own. Right. It's more telling about us. Exactly. And so you're okay. You found a way to reconcile it. You push it back. Yeah, I get it. I, I completely understand. I understand the curiosity. The thing is, like, no matter what, as long as I have a body, no matter, I'm sure people say things about your body. Yes. And you, you have a, well, I don't want to talk about your body. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Like, I even do this thing where, like, I try not to tell people who are, like, tall and beautiful that they're too tall, that they're, not that they're too tall, but they're yeah. tall at all. Because they know, you know I'm tall, you know you're tall, I'm not giving you any information. Right. Right. I'm just, like, not going to talk about your body. Yeah. That's so weird. Yeah, like, why it's do you have so to do it? Yeah. I know, I have a mirror. Yeah, but the thing is, like, as long as you have a body, no matter what that body looks like, people will feel like they can talk about it. My body isn't any different mm -hmm. just because it's a little bigger and it's in the limelight. Like, people are talking about, you know, junior high schoolers' bodies, too, and it's, like, unfair. Can I just, can you mind your own body? Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> mind your own body. Boom. M-Y-O-B. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like Hashtag that a lot. Hashtag in my own I don't know why I yelled at you guys. Hashtag it. So I want to know a little bit about going back in your history when there was depression and an eating disorder. I've never heard an eating disorder explained so well to me. You talked about your bulimia and what it did for you at that time in your life. How did you explain it? Why did you need it? I, I didn't really... I, you know, it kind of didn't start as I think you think of eating disorders as like, oh, that's you trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And that's not, what was that's not what was happening. I was having panic attacks where I couldn't stop crying and I couldn't breathe and like my entire body felt like it was like heaving and shutting down. And I, one day I got so upset that I threw up and I realized and then, that it made me stop crying. Mm -hmm. And so I just started doing it in order to change my behavior. It's just kind of like when you're hiccuping, it's a whole thing. But like when you're hiccuping, you drink water because it kind of changes your brain chemistry. Yeah. It was kind of that thing, which was like super unhealthy. Don't go out and start throwing up on purpose, you guys. Yeah. But um, that's why I started doing it. And I realized it, was, it wasn't helping me, but it was changing my emotion. And that's how it got started. I think the usual story is that it's to lose weight, but for me, it wasn't. One quote, if I could just get the world to see me the way I see myself, would my body still be a thing you walked away thinking about? Um, and I think the answer is no, it wouldn't be. So congratulations to you and everything you've accomplished. Gabourey, everyone. <laughs>